Hello guys. In this video, I'm gonna uh, show you how to solve like uh, uh, a problem in which you are giving the A matrix, okay? And you should find the orthogonal matrix B, you know, basically in one of the chapters in our book, one of the topics here. Okay, we learned that, you know, you can uh, like multiply any matrix like with certain properties in a certain way such as that the output of the result will be uh, a diagonal matrix okay so basically uh, in that case here b minus one uh, times a times b will be equal to diagonal matrix okay and you know for the records that this diagonal matrix is basically the lambdas the eigen you know, uh, values of the matrix A. So basically this would be equal to like lambda one, lambda two, and so on until lambda n. Okay, and the rest is just zeros. Diagonal matrix, just the, you have the main diagonal, all the other elements are just zero. Okay. So in that uh, question here, with that problem here, we are giving A, and we want to find or it's required to, it's required to find the matrix B. Okay. And B is a is an orthogonal matrix. Okay. And orthogonal matrix means that the columns are orthogonal to each other. Okay. So for example, if B is equal to, for example, F1, F2, F3, let's assume it's like three columns, which is basically the case here in that uh, you know, so F1 dot F2. Is equal to zero. That means F1 is orthogonal to F2 or perpendicular to F2. And F1 dot F3 is also equal to zero. And finally, F2 also uh, or dot you know, F3 is equal to zero. So all of them are perpendicular to each other or orthogonal to each other. Okay, so if we, for example, draw the vector F like that, F1, for example, F2 might be like that. And F3 might be like that. So all of them are perpendicular to each other. Okay. For example, three dimension. Of course, it might be like three dimension, three, four dimension or something. Okay. So how to do that? Okay. So there is like a certain like uh, way that we learn it from the textbook. I'm going to just, you know, highlight it here in a concise way, in a detailed way. So you guys can grasp it, you know, and understand it, you know, uh, very efficiently. Also, I'm gonna show you how to use like some like online calculators again to verify your solution and again to uh, assure you like correctness or the accuracy of your solution as well. So the first step to solve such uh, problems is to find the uh, the eigenvalues. So the first step here is to find the eigenvalues of the matrix A, okay? So how to find the eigenvalues? So we find them by basically applying such like a formula here, like lambda I minus A equal to zero, okay? Or the determinant, let's, let's write it that way, the determinant determinant of lambda i minus a equal to lambda here like represent like any like variable and this variable will have like multiple values as well as like this will result in an equation a binomial equation it might be like uh, a third degree for example or it has three roots okay but a has three uh, columns in it. so so what we're gonna do Basically, we're gonna apply this. So lambda i, this will be like that, lambda zero, 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 lambda zero, 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 lambda minus a, three minus six, zero, minus six, zero, six, zero, six, minus three. Okay, so we want to find the determinant of all that and make it equal to zero. Okay, okay, so 
it's really difficult to So just, you know, subtract these are corresponding elements to each other. So lambda minus 3, 0 minus minus 6 will be 6, 0 minus 0 will be 0, 6, lambda, and minus 6, uh, 0, minus 6, and lambda plus 3. Okay, lambda plus 3. So that's very like a straightforward, uh, like a three by three matrix that we can find the determinant easily. So uh, we're gonna find the determinant based on the first row here. Okay, so for the first element, the lambda minus three would be multiplied. Let's just remove the first. You know, yeah. We're gonna do this step by step. So we just hash out the first column, uh, first row, hash out the first column. So we're going to find the determinant of the rest, which is that case. So that will be lambda, lambda plus 3, uh, minus, minus 6, min, uh, times minus 6 is 36, so minus 36. Okay, good. It's now remove the hashing, so like stroke, whatever they call it. And now we're going to do the same, but for the second, element in row one. So we're gonna hash out the first row as usual. Hash out the first, the second column, okay? And we're gonna end up with six minus six, zero, lambda plus three. Remember the second element should have like a minus sign, so six here, minus six. And that will be multiplied by six, lambda minus, plus three, six, lambda plus three, minus zero, because zero times minus six is zero. Okay, good. Very long, right? So we're gonna uh, continue. So uh, lambda, lambda minus three, uh, just multiply this by the, uh, what's between the brackets, lambda plus three, minus 36, lambda minus three, minus 36, lambda plus three. Okay. So we're gonna take the 36 here, as a common factor, so lambda, lambda minus three, lambda plus three, minus 36, uh, lambda minus three, uh, plus lambda plus three, because we take the minus 36 as a common factor, remember the minus here. So we're gonna end up only with lambda plus three, okay? So minus three will cancel out with plus three. But that will give us here, uh, like uh, uh, lambda, lambda minus three, uh, then uh, yeah, yeah, and also, yeah, let's multiply these together, okay? So this will be, uh, yeah, let's. So if we multiply these to lambda square minus nine, and then here we have two lambdas, uh, so minus 72 lambda, so equal to, very long, I know. Uh, and it will be lambda. Can I take the lambda as a common factor as usual? So lambda and lambda square, uh, minus 79, 72 minus nine, it will be minus 81. Minus 81. So, and this should equal to zero. Remember that the determinant should equal to zero. Okay, so uh, this can be equal to zero. This equation here or this term can equal to zero in two ways. Either lambda equal to zero, that's the first root of this equation, or lambda minus 81 equal to zero, which means remember 81 is basically nine square minus, the square of the line. So that will be lambda squared equal to 81. So lambda equal to plus or minus nine. So we have three roots here, okay? Of course, that takes like very long, right? And you might, you know, eventually make it like they have a mistake or something and, you know, everything will be like very bad. So 
to verify your answer, also you have to do that. You know, you have to train yourself always to find the eigenvalues in that way. There is also like an online calculator in which you can find uh, these uh, lambdas very easily. So uh, we want to find lambda for the matrix A. So the matrix is three uh, minus six and zero. Uh, here we have six. Here we have minus three. Here we have uh, six. Here we have uh, zero. We have zero. Here we have minus six. Remember, uh, because A is symmetric, A is symmetric here, that's why we could end up that we could represent A as B minus one A uh, like B. Okay. So let's find here. So I think this is correct. Yeah, this is, yeah, it's correct. So let's find this. Yes. Good. So yeah, it's either it's even give, giving us like the eigenvectors as well. Okay. So which we eventually we need. So lambda one is equal to zero, and the corresponding eigenvector is one half and one. Uh, lambda two is nine. The corresponding eigenvector is minus two uh, two one. Uh, lambda three is minus nine, and the corresponding eigenvector is minus half minus one and one. This guy here. Okay. So. I'm gonna show you guys how to find one of the eigenvectors, which is basically uh, like V1, okay? Which is corresponding to lambda one equal to zero. And you guys can follow the same and find uh, like a uh, second eigenvector and the third eigenvector, okay? So let's find that. Although we have them here, so I'm gonna just find one, then we're gonna just copy and paste basically, right? Okay, so the second step is basically to find the eigen uh, vectors because we're gonna need them. I'm gonna show you why. First, find them. So, two finding the eigen vectors. Actually, we found like the eigen values in the first step, basically to find the eigen vectors. So that's the ultimate goal here. Okay. So, the, to find the eigen vectors. So, what we should do basically, uh, let's find, for example, for lambda equal to zero. Okay. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go back to that like uh, uh, like matrix here and just substitute lambda with zero, okay? So and that will be, well, that will give us basically minus three, it's six and zero, six, zero minus six, zero minus six and three. Zero plus three is equal to three. Okay, we just remove the lambda and put zero. That's what we got. So after the substitution, you know, with lambda equal to zero, what we got here is basically lambda i minus a. Okay, and remember that lambda i minus a times x equal to zero. You can find this in the textbook. You know when we is to study like the eigenvalues when it determines the diagonalization, you guys, if you remember, okay, in chapter three. So, uh, basically, here, you know, if we multiply this by x, x1, x2, x3, this will give us like zero. So, what is that one here? That's the first eigenvector. The eigenvector corresponding to lambda equal to zero. Okay, so that's you know piece of cake basically, because using the uh, you know, like uh, Gaussian elimination, we can find the x is very easily here, right? So minus three, six, zero, and zero. Six, zero, minus six, and zero. Zero minus six, three, and zero. We can, you know, uh, multiply the first row by two and add the second row to it. So basically, first row will be the same. Uh, when we multiply, let's see how this will change. So this will be minus six, this will be 20, this will be zero, this will be zero. So when we do the addition, Six minus six will be zero. Zero plus twelve is twelve. Minus six and zero is minus six and zero. 
and no change for the third row it already have a zero uh, then we can multiply the second row here by half and uh, again add to row three so that will be uh, six this will be minus three and this will stay zero so that will give us third step here first row the same Second row will be zero. Uh, yeah, same again. Then third row, minus six plus six is zero. We wanted three minus three is again zero. And zero plus zero is also zero. So that's what we end up with, okay? So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna assume x three equal to t. So we, we eliminated the last row. The last equation basically okay and we end up we end up with two equations only so let's write them you know uh like carefully at, at least the second equation so 0x1 plus 12x2 minus 6x3 equal to 0 okay so in here we can assume x3 equal to some parameter like t and find x2 in terms of that brand. So, so 12x2 will be equal to uh, 6x3, 6t basically. So x2 is equal to uh, like half t, half t spoon, <laughs> half t. Okay, so x3 is equal to t and x2 is equal to half, to, half t. Then we, uh, we go finally to equation one so minus three x one plus six x two equal to zero so minus three x one plus six x two x two is half t so six divided by two t equal to zero from that uh, x one is equal to is equal to t actually just multiply by three or uh, one third actually so this would like uh, t, just t. Okay, so we found basically the first eigen back. So the first eigen vector, ah, uh, yeah, we should like named x1, x2, x3, like abc or something. Uh, because usually when we when we name the eigen value, the eigen vectors, we give them x. But let's let's for a moment here it changes that to v. So v1, which is like uh, first eigen vector okay equal to uh, t and half t and t so it's equal to t one half one let's review together here i have the solution in front of me just in case so check that uh, yes that's correct Okay, you can just even write it without the t. So assume t is equal to one. That's very perfectly fine. So v one is equal to one half one. Okay, the same like solution or the same way you can find v two and v three. So you can just copy them and paste it from like the uh, like the the online calculus that we just used here. So v two equal to uh, that's the corresponding to the line of is equal to minus two to one minus two to one and v3 which is corresponding to lambda equal to minus minus nine so this lambda minus nine here lambda nine plus nine this guy is equal to uh, minus half minus one one minus half minus one and one the same way so for example for lambda equal to nine you're gonna come here and replace the lambda by nine so nine minus three will be six and so okay okay let's continue so we got now the eigenvectors okay so how to find basically uh you know the orthogonal matrix b so number three finding orthogonal like 
columns of B. So B is equal to like some mysterious vectors called F1, F2, F3. But what is the relation between these Fs and, or Fs, you know, these columns F1, F2, F3, and X1 or V1, V2, V3, the eigenvectors? It turns out that they are heavily relied on them, okay? Actually, if these eigenvectors are orthogonal to each other, I mean, if you multiply dot product uh, eigenvectors to each, to each other and they are zeros, then they can represent F1, F2, F3 easily, okay? But if they don't, you have to find F1, F2, F3 based on V1, V2, V3, okay? So, there is like uh, an algorithm in the book, uh, you know, that you can apply to find basically uh, the orthogonal basis based on, for some vectors, based on the vectors itself, okay? So, that goes in that way. So, you assume F1 equal to V1. And from that, F1 now is known, we find it, it's equal to V1, so it's equal to, what is V1 here? 1 half 1, 1 half and very easy. Okay, now how to find F2? F2 is equal to V2 minus the projection of V2 on F1. So V2 dot uh, basically uh, F1 divided by the length squared of F1 and the direction of F1. That's a vector. So let's Let's substitute and see. V2 is minus 2, 2, 1. Minus. Ah, we're going to multiply V2. Dot product is not just a multiplication. So dot product between dot product here. V2 and F1. That is V2 and that's F1. So we're going to multiply the corresponding elements to each other and, and add them together. So minus 2 multiplied by 1 will give you minus 2 plus. 2 multiplied by half will give you 1. 1 multiplied by 1 will give you, fortunately, 1. Okay? Do we need to continue to find? Uh, we don't need, but let's continue. That's fine. F1, the length of F1 squared. So the length itself, which is F1, that square, is equal to square root of uh, square of 1. 1 squared plus half square plus 1 squared. And what is F1? F1 itself is 1 half and 1. It turns out, you know, that the numerator here is 0. That's basically 0, right? Minus 2 plus 2 is equal to 0. So 0 multiplied by anything divided by anything will just give you 0. So the result here is that F2 is equal actually to V2. Equal to minus 2, 2, 1. So our eigenvectors, two of them already were orthogonal to each other. F1 and F, or I'm sorry, V1 and V2. That's why F1 equal to uh, V1 and F2 equal to directly V3. Is this the, is this the case with F3? Let's, let's see. So F3 is a little bit more complicated according to the, you know, it's lengthier, you know, longer, I'm sorry. Uh, based on like the, uh, the algorithm in the book. So uh, it's equal to V3 this time minus the projection of V3 on F1 minus the projection of F, uh, V3 on F2. All the previous like vectors. In that case, F2 and F1. So V3 dot F1 divided by F1 square <laughs> F1 minus V3 F2, F2, square, square, F2. Okay, and I have a lot of work here. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so, yeah, let's do this. I don't know, a new line. A line. Okay, so V3, what is V3? V is basically minus half, minus one, one. Minus half, minus one, and do Mr. One. Okay. Then we're gonna multiply the corresponding elements of V3 by F1. 
F1, I believe, is very close. Yeah, this is F1. So minus half multiplied by one will give you minus half plus, or let's see it plus or minus, we don't know. Uh, minus one multiplied by half will give you minus half. Then one multiplied by one will give you one, so plus one. Uh, fortunately, because again, this, this will be zero. And the, I'm sorry, this is here, by the way, it's squaring. So the square root will go away. So again, a square of F1, which is one square plus half square plus one square. Again, we don't need all of that because it's going to be vanished because we get one half and one. Before we continue, just state the fact this is basically minus one plus one. This is minus one and this is plus one. So again, this will be zero. Let's continue. Let's see if this is the case with uh, V3 and F2. V3, F2. Again, this is V3. Where is F2? This is F2. So you have minus half multiplied by minus two. That will give you plus one. Okay. Uh, minus one multiplied by two, that will give us uh, minus two. Okay. Then one multiplied by one, this will give us plus one. Again, fortunately, that will be zero. And again, the square root, I'm sorry, the square root of the square root, okay, of the length of uh, F2, where is F2? Uh, That's F2, basically. So you have four plus four plus one, okay? And what's F2 is minus two, two, one. So before we continue, so what is that? That's plus two minus two. It's one plus one is two and minus two, that will go away. So again, at the end of the day, we were so lucky and F3 is equal to, my, it's equal to actually V3. So let's like write this, like equal to V3, equal to minus half, minus one, and one. Let's check because I didn't check for a while. So F3 minus half, yes, that's correct. F2 is equal to minus two, two, yeah, that's very correct. Now, finally, we can get the matrix B, okay? Also, I'm gonna do like very little correction, very little one, okay, but of course crucial. So I said like B is just F1, F2, F3, okay? You know, we should just, you know, correct that a little bit by dividing by the length of F1, the length of F2, the length of F3. We have F1, F2, F3, we could like find them. Now we should just get the length of each one. So F1 length is equal to, let's check here, it's one half and one, so square root of one plus uh, one square, one half square, one square. So that will be uh, two plus one fourth, okay? So we can write the two as eight divided by uh, four plus one fourth. That will be nine divided by four, three over two. Okay, that's the length of F1. Now F2, F2 length. So F2, what is F2 basically? It is minus two to one. So that will be minus two squared is four, two squared is four, one squared is one, that's square root of nine, which is three. Finally, F3 length is uh, minus half minus one one. That's basically like this, exactly like like if one. So it will be one fourth, one plus one. So it's it's again three over two. Now we can find it easily B. So B equal two. So F one. Where is F one? One half one. One you uh, you should divide it by three uh, over two. So let's. One over three over two. Half over. Oh, that's that's a mess. So one over three over two. It will be two two over three. Then half 
uh, like half divided by three over two, uh, that will be one over three. Then uh, one, so two over three. You guys can correct me, uh, you know. Uh, now, F2, F2 is uh, minus two to one, minus two to one. So minus two over three, two over three, one over three. Okay, with F2 links, just the three. Yeah, that looks good. Now, finally, F3, three, three over two again, and the F3 is minus half, minus one, and one. So minus half divided by three over two, that will give us minus one third. Minus one, so minus two over three and two over three. Looks like we can take like the one third as a common factor. So one third in here, that will end up with two, one, two, minus two, two, one, and minus one, minus two, and two. Check here if our solution is correct or not. I have here the solution in front of me. So one third, that's correct. Two, one, two, minus two, two, one, uh, and minus one, minus two, two. Okay, that basically, you know, the solution. And that's actually a correct solution. Now, finally, finally, we finished the, the problem. Okay, so uh, one final note here or observation that you might, you might do and still your solution will be correct is basically there are different forms of the matrix B and all of them are correct, but they are different, okay? And when I say correct, I mean that P minus one, A, P will still equal to uh, like uh, the, the diagonal matrix, the egg of lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, okay? But remember here, look, the, 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 uh, we get lambda one equal to zero, right? We get lambda two equal to nine, we get lambda three equal to minus nine. What, and we get that shape here for, uh, for B. What if we change it the order? If we call, for example, lambda one equal to nine, lambda two equal to zero, lambda three equal to minus nine. That's cool. Absolutely. 100% legitimate. You can do that. Also, you're going to get like, you know, a different B. It will be very similar to this one that I uh, that I get here. But, you know, the columns will maybe reordered. Some minus or most of signs will be like swapped. Okay. But it's still correct. Yes, it's different. But I'm saying correct because, again, if you... Take B minus one, multiply by A, multiply by B, we get the diagonal. But the diagonal will be according to that. So here, B minus one, A, P will be equal to diag of nine, zero, minus nine. Not zero, nine, minus nine. Okay? So the choice of lambdas, the order, okay, will change, of course, the eigenvectors. Remember, remember, guys, that. F1 is dependent on V1. F2 is dependent on uh, V1 and V2. F3 is dependent on V1, V2, V3. Okay. In that case, of course, here in that particular like problem, uh, F2 will completely equal to V2. F3 completely equal to V3. Okay. And V1 is coming from lambda equal to zero. V2 coming from lambda equal to nine. V3 coming from lambda equal to minus nine. So the changing of the naming of lambdas, like lambda one is equal to nine, for example, will it change the order, right? And hence B will change. Uh, but what what remains factual and correct is that if you take the inverse of B, multiply by A, multiply by B again, you're gonna get the diagonal a diagonal matrix. But with the order of lambdas that you did, okay? So. That's basically, you know, a uh, very important observation, okay, that you should take, uh, like, into consideration when you solve such problem. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching, and see you in another video.